let's take a look at these problems. This is this one is set up with the graph of the derivative, but not set up with the fundamental theorem of calculus, which means I'm going to have to tell you one of the points on the function so we know where to, to locate things vertically. And I just said f of negative 2 is equal to 7. So that's how we do things when I say here's the graph of f prime. And if with the second fundamental theorem of calculus, I'll say the integral from, say, negative 2 to x of f of t d2. But in this case, I just said here's the derivative, and f of two negative 2 is equal to 7. So the things that we care about are, of course, how things are changing. And that would mean that we would want to know the area. So the areas that we have here are 4 for that triangle on the left, 2 pi for that semicircle um, underneath, and 3 for the triangle on the right side, assuming that I calculated my areas correctly, which is a dangerous thing to assume. So over here on the left, I'm just saying I'm calculating area. I'm calculating definite integrals by calculating area. So these are just areas of these three regions. The areas of those three regions tell us how things are changing. The areas of those three regions are just telling us how things are changing. So if we were to make a table of values for what's going on, Uh, we know that f of negative 2 is 7, and that for the integral from negative 6 to negative 2 of f prime is 4, because that's the area. So we must have been starting off at 3 to add 4 to end up at 7. So if we're adding 4 one way, we're subtracting 4 the other way. From negative 2 to 2, we're going to decrease by 2 pi, and I ask for exact values. So we'll just write 7 minus 2 pi. That's the exact value of f of 2. And then the other problem has the exact value of f of 5. Where we go from 7 minus 2 pi, we add 3. So that must be at 10 minus 2 pi. That's just reading the sign of the derivative telling us the direction of the function, the area tell us how much of a change we see. This is completing a whole table of values. Uh, in the problem I said, show your calculations, this would be like showing your calculations. You've calculated the areas. You don't even have to write this part. If you just put like a four in there, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's the area. <laughs> And then like all then you put the if you just said three, yeah, that's four before the three. So I go, that's four. So f of six, f of negative six is three. If we look at the definite integral from negative six to negative two of f prime of x to x, we know that this is four. We also know from the fundamental theorem of calculus that this is f at negative two minus f at negative 6. So this is just our fundamental theorem of calculus. The area tells us that the definite integral from negative 6 to negative 2 of f prime of x dx is equal to 4. f of negative 2 is given as 7. And f of negative 6 is what we're looking for. If we rearrange this, we find that f of negative 6 is 7 minus 4 or the 3. For f of 5, the easiest thing to do would be to start with f of negative 2 and then just find the area up to 5. Let's just be adding those two regions. So f of 5, we'll start off at f of negative 2. Then we'll add the integral from negative 2 to 2 of f prime of x dx. That's the change in the function from negative 2 to 2. And then we can add the integral from 2 to 5 of f prime of x dx. 
f of negative two is given at seven. The integral from negative two to two of f prime of x dx is the area, the signed area. And the integral from two to five is also the area. So here we are coming at it from the fundamental theorem of calculus standpoint. The best thing to write is the one that occurs to you to write in the moment. The most important part of the answer is, the most important part to write for me is the three and the 10 minus two pi. That's just math culture. When we say exact values, that means we're not grabbing our calculator and getting our decimal approximations. Because, the, because pi is irrational, no matter how many decimal places you write, that's an approximation. On problem two, on what intervals is f decreasing? f is decreasing when f prime is negative. So we see that f prime is negative on the interval from negative two to two. And so we'll say f is decreasing on the interval from negative two to two. questions. You could also use interval notation if you happen to be writing this. So you might want to write in, if, if you want to write this in interval notation, you could write from negative two to two. In this case, we have to know that we're not talking about the point, the coordinates negative two, two. We're talking about the open interval from negative two to two, not including the endpoints. Questions? How's everybody okay? I think the one that I'm typing in Canvas uses this format. So I just put a blank, less than x, less than blank. And I forgot to imply that there might be more than one interval. In part three, find the minimum value of f. So this is a little bit different than the question that I was asking yesterday. On that, uh, yesterday, I said find the x-coordinate of a local minimum or a local maximum, whichever one it was. Here, I'm asking for the minimum value of the function. So not where it occurs, but what it is. So this is where we need this other piece of the, this other piece of the table. So uh, the minimum value of f happens at two because the function changes from decreasing to increasing. So we'd say that f has a minimum value of seven minus two pi at x equals two. Two is where the minimum happens. Seven minus two, two pi is the minimum value of the function. This is the lowest value that we see in the table. And we can see that on the graph because the function changes from decrease, uh, the derivative changes from decreasing the derivative changes from negative to positive, so the function is changing from decreasing to increasing.
for a more detailed explanation, you could say, you could explain that F prime changes from negative to positive. So F changes from decreasing to increasing. In problem four, we want F double prime at negative five and F double prime at three. So what we're looking for here is the second derivative. Values for the second derivative are gonna be slopes of tangent lines on the first derivative. So F double prime at five will be the slope of the line tangent to the function at five, at negative five. And if we look here at, at negative five, it looks like we have a slope of negative two over four. Oops, not trying to hide this part. Just look at the graph and read the slope. This is what we talked about yesterday. If you're looking at the graph, if you want values of the derivative, just read the graph. If you want values of the function, calculate with the area. If you want values of the second derivative, look at the slope. At three, three is, uh, at three, we cannot draw a tangent line. So F double prime at three does not exist. F double prime at three is undefined. And the reason is that the slope headed from the left is different than the slope from the right. There is no F double prime of three. If we, if we want a more detailed explanation, so the reason is, the graph is pointy at three. That's not a very technical definition. If we want a technical definition, we would have to point out that the slope of the tangent from the left is positive two, and the slope of the tangent from the right is negative one. So if we wanted to write that, we'd say the limit as x approaches three from the left of f prime of x minus f prime of three. Oh, I can't really write that. Oh, yeah, I can't because it's double prime. So as we come in from the left towards three, we have a slope of positive two. But the limit from the right is negative one. Since the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right, the limit doesn't exist. Any questions, comments, slide remark? All right, that's going to do it for today. Tomorrow we'll have practice test three. It's just the antiderivatives and then graph of the derivatives. That's going to do it for today. I will see you all on tomorrow. Everybody have a good day and thanks for playing.